good evening. Um, Junie and a number of my friends and I just finished a class with Jeffrey Ewan a short time ago. I were um, the teacher that we've, some of us have been studying, some have been studying longer. I've been studying with him for 20 years now. As he says, when he often hears us say something like that, it's like, well, you should be through by now. I think he tries to get us to leave oftentimes, but it's not something um, many of his students choose to do. Um, well, I want to start off tonight um, by making a little comparison between North Carolina and Hong Kong and talking about what the difference is. There are seven and a half million people in Hong Kong and 10 million here in North Carolina. So, you know, we have, you know, a couple of million more people than in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong at this point in time, they've had four deaths from COVID-19, four deaths out of seven and a half million people. In North Carolina, out of 10 million people, we've had more than a thousand deaths deaths. You can see that's a pretty major difference between the two countries. And I think what I want to really talk about tonight is mask. I have a friend who is Hong Kongese and um, Hong Kongers do not refer to themselves as Chinese. They refer to this, themselves as Hong Kongese or Hong Kongers. But um, when this first started, she called me up. She says, I don't care what people say to you, put on mask, wear a mask, it makes a difference. And last time I talked about the, um, um, the research that they did in Hong Kong with the hamsters. And there's also been some research now that's been done here in the United States. And I think, we need to really look at the difference because I believe that the reason is because Hong Kongers are wearing masks. People in China are wearing masks and that's still not happening. And we're going to talk about some places to go and some things to do. And I've looked up some research on beaches and what happens at going to a beach for those of you who are here in North and South Carolina, close to beaches. But um, one of the things that they're seeing that we know, all of us know, this is not something we're seeing, is we know that, you know, a virus is spread via respiratory droplets, okay? It's mostly through coughs and sneezes, but even loud speaking, or, you know, unfortunately, people like myself who basically, because of the speech impediment I have, I tend to spit more whenever I talk. So it's even more important for me to be wearing a mask to protect everyone that I'm around. But, you know, I want to talk a little bit about masks because now we're looking at the summer coming and we already know that they create heat. We already know that we're burning up inside of the mask sometimes. And, you know, particularly on a day when I'm in my office for 11 hours and wearing a mask for 11 hours in rooms that, you know, by the end of the day, again, my face is extremely red from that. But I want to talk about mask and how we're going to get through the summer. And I'm going to recommend that you look about at cotton because cotton, you know, is it particularly good at absorbing moisture, uh, but it's more breathable. It, you know, it breathes easier than synthetic virus fibers such as polyester. So uh, unfortunately, because it's cotton, it makes it hotter and it may be a little bit harder to breathe through. But they've been doing some research study now looking at what kind of mask we need. And they've, they did some research that showed that if you even had one layer of a t-shirt material, that it blocked out 40% of the water droplets and if you added a second layer to that, it increased it to 98%. But 
This is, uh, was done at the University of Illinois uh, in one of their research centers. And so basically cotton mask with two thin layers, you know, over the nose and over the mouth is going to be one of the best. And when you're outside during the summer, you may need to have three masks with you for that day, okay? Because once they're, you know, once you've been had it on for a while, it, it's going to get hot. It's going to get damp. Um, another thing that's really better, even than cotton, is bamboo material. Um, it's even better than organic cotton. It can absorb about three times the amount of water that cotton absorbs and it's much more lightweight. So you might also look about getting some bamboo cloth and making masks out of bamboo cloth. Um, the other thing, obviously, we're not gonna make these, you see all these black masks that people have been buying? That's great for the winter. But um, during the summer, you know, and particularly for my friends that I see on here that are from New Mexico, you're going to want light colored masks. They do not need to be, you know, a dark brown or black. And as I said, you want to have two or three of those if you're going to be out in the sun for a long period of time. Now, you might have heard me say over the years something about damp heat. Well, damp heat would be that mask that's become hot. And now because of your moisture, it's damp and hot. And that's a kind of a breeding ground for viral and bacteria. So you don't want to be wearing one after it's gotten down like that. So you want to have about three that you can just change during the day. And again, remember, when you're changing a mask, you're not going to reach up and touch it like this. The minute you're touching the face of that, everything that you may have blocked is on the outside of that. So take it off either here or reaching back if strings are over the ear, take it off. And then before you put on a new one, spray your hands again. Because these masks that we've been wearing to you know, basically protect us and to protect others, you have to realize that the outside of them is already coated with whatever's coming. And again, the fact that they're stopping 98% of that 95 to 98% is really good. You can go on the internet now also and see um, some, um, they're selling uh, got a, an inner layer to put on side of a mask that helps to block more. And mm -hmm. those are usually made out of polyester, so they're going to get a lot hotter. But, you know, even two thicknesses of cotton is going to make a big difference. Remember, every day you wear a mask, you don't hang it out for it to dry and put it on the next day. You wash it in hot water. You also put it in a dryer. And if you don't feel like you have really hot water, then you take out an iron and iron it. So all of these things are really important. And every one of us should have three or four masks now in, on a day when it's really hot outside and we're going out into the weather. Um, you know, you have to remember that this virus can survive if it's on copper for about four hours, on cardboard for a day, and plastic or stainless steel, which is probably what most of it's on, for two to three days, according to the New England Journal of Medicine. And again, the biggest thing is to remember, stay six feet away from everyone. That's absolutely the best way to prevent it. If it's not a family member, if it's not somebody you're with in your home all day long, six feet is the most important thing. Now, I've had a lot of patients asking me about going to the beach because here in Asheville, we live in the mountains, but it's only a good five hours to uh, Charleston, to Folly Beach, or to one of the beaches there, or going you know, east past Durham over to uh, Wilmington and Wrightsville Beach. So you know, people have asked about the virus and being in the water with people who may 
have been exposed and may be carrying it. And what they're finding out is that even if there are viral particles in the water, okay, that they're not going to be in high enough concentration. So if you're swimming out in the ocean and you're six feet away from other people, then you can consider yourself in a pretty safe environment. I think the problem is, is when we saw all of those kids who were out at the beaches at spring breaks all just crammed right up to each other without their mask on. So if you can stay six feet away from people at the beach and out in the water, then I'm going to suggest that during those times, if you're not walking close to people, go ahead and don't wear a mask under, you know, underneath your umbrella or whatever. But, you know, once you're out in the water, you really don't have to worry about it. But I think it's going to be really important for all of us to, you know, feel comfortable, you know, going to a beach. And the, the nice thing is, is they've already started some um, research studies that have already shown that even in the water, the viral particles are not, they, they don't feel they're going to be dangerous enough. So as usual, I jumped right in and didn't do a pre-talk which my daughter is always saying, mom, introduce, you know, self, tell everybody, thanks for coming. So I'm going to back up and do what my daughter tells me to do. So it's good to see you all tonight. Uh, thank you for coming. And um, tonight I'm going to um, give you an update, which you just heard, and, and I'm not going to say it again. I just said it once. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about presence and about uh, in Chinese medicine, how important our hands are for healing. I think usually Paul tries to put these up um, on the internet, and he's going to be, um, he'll probably put this one up later. I think the one that um, happened uh, two weeks ago is now up on the internet. Uh, I want to remind you that once we uh, finish here about 7.45, if you have questions, um, I'll be um, answering questions. And, you know, sometimes I don't want you to think that you just have to ask questions based on the topic I talked about. If you have a question about something around Chinese medicine, I'm happy, happy to answer that. Now, um, so, you know, anything um, that I can do will be fine as far as um, any question you can have. But I'm, we'll do that, you know, about 15 minutes before we stop. And so one of the things I really, you know, have looked at tonight and wanted to talk about is we've been talking about different modes of healing. We've talked about Qigong. We've talked about the types of exercise, walking, how important it is. You know, we've talked about the illness itself and how the heart is being impacted. And again, from Chinese medicine, we don't speak of the brain as being uh, what brings us wisdom. But the brain is our library. And it's where the heart connects and stores because all of wisdom and knowledge actually comes from the heart. And so we see in this illness that it's been really impacting people's heart with, you know, cardiac events. And we see that, you know, it's, there's a lot of problems with blood clots and clotting. And now we're starting to see neurological events with the brain as we learn more and more about this. And I continue to tell people that we're really only going to know about this illness from a, you know, Western perspective in another couple of another at least a year from now okay right now all we're going to know about it is you know what we see individuals who have it or what we experience with um, friends or what we read about in the hospital I forgot to turn off my phone before we started. So I'm going to turn that off. I'll be gone for 30 seconds.
usually I have a friend here to help with those things and uh, tonight I don't so uh, it's what can I say the fauna just started going off so um, you know so we've looked at some of what's happening from uh, a Western and we've looked at it some from a Chinese uh, perspective and we've talked about the things that we need to do to stay healthy. We've talked a little bit about nutrition. We've talked about massage, tweena, and how to stay healthy uh, by just touching and loving each other with some massage and working on some specific points. We've also talked about um, just basically hope and faith and being able to connect with others you know, on an emotional level at a time when we can't really connect as well on a physical level. So these are all things that we've talked about, but I thought tonight that really what I wanted to do was talk again about healing and what you can do for yourself and what you can do for loved ones. And, you know, we all, in Chinese medicine, we talk a lot about the word presence and um, and what it means to each of us. And we talk about presence coming from the heart. And we know the heart's associated with love. And we, you probably heard us talk about the pericardium and the heart protector. So the heart is associated with love, and the heart protector is associated with uh, safety. In other words, how do we feel safe you know, what keeps us safe emotionally. And when we start talking about the heart, what we have to talk about are what are the things that each of us loves and what are the qualities of presence that each of us carry because each of us carry a presence about us. And what does that mean? Um, right now, with everything going in the own, in our country, and I watched today um, a little video of what was happening in Rome. I have a lot of Italian friends because Jeffrey teaches there. And, you know, in looking at what's happening around the world, some of us are being asked to change our perceptions. And the truth is, all of us have the ability to change our perception of the world. And whenever we change our perception of the world, it also creates a change within ourselves. And so tonight I'd like for us to really look at, you know, you know, who are you or who am I? Okay. And if I'm looking at you and I'm, or if I'm looking at myself, then I'm going to recommend that all of us just look at ourselves tonight. Each one of us look within and wonder, do you have capacity? Do you have the belief that your body can heal and that you can help your body to heal, okay? And the reason, you know, I want to address this is because I think that oftentimes we forget how much our body has the capacity to heal. And I talk about this oftentimes if we're working in the kitchen and accidentally cut our finger, you know, I'm chopping vegetables. And uh, it seems to be something that I do pretty easily sometimes is cut myself when I'm trying to chop vegetables. But if we chop, you know, cut our finger, you know, really, what do we have to do? All we have to do is to wrap something around it, keep it clean. And our body immediately begins to try and heal itself. And usually we don't have to do anything for that. And so we have a belief that we can heal if we have a cut on our fingers. But oftentimes we don't carry that belief into other things. We don't carry that into, oh, I have this cold. I have a respiratory infection. I have a stomach flu. I have a, um, I have hypertension. Um, I have cancer. Okay, and you know what I want to say is that there 
always things that, you know, can take us out. We, I was really sad to see that we had our first young, young child die in North Carolina this last week and a child that was, you know, pretty healthy. And we don't know what are the parameters for each of us in being able to heal, but we certainly have to have faith and a presence that we have the ability to heal. And so I'm going to ask you to think real quick about what is it that you love? And what do you feel in your heart when you feel love? Once you felt that, I want you to try to bring that presence of what you love into your hands. Because in Chinese medicine, we, we, we believe that the hands have strong abilities to help foster healing and health. And, you know, as I go through this, you know, I want to talk about alignment and alignment with what we love. Because what we love, focusing on that, sometimes can give us the confidence for our body's ability to heal itself. Confidence in Chinese medicine is referred to as shin shin. And the first shin or the second shin there is the character for heart. And the first of those shins, because when you say shin shin, I'm obviously mispronouncing it. So any of uh, the folks here who speak Chinese, it's perfectly fine for you to laugh at my Chinese. But when I say that, it has to do with trust and heart and the fact that each of us needs to trust our hearts. And it also means, remind you, that when I say trust your hearts, our heart are what carries our thoughts, our memories, our wisdom. And so it means that we also have to trust what we believe, our belief systems. And, you know, when we talk about confidence, you know, the one thing I need to say is confidence doesn't always mean competence out in the world. And, you know, sometimes those people who exhibit the most confidence doesn't necessarily mean that they're competent. And what I want you to do is that confidence for your own healing and for your own ability to make changes within yourself is something that you do have the ability to have confidence in. You know, when, it, you know, sometimes out in the world, you can see someone who talks about everything they can do and how powerful they are. And we've all run into those people and we've learned already that those sometimes people, those are not people we feel really safe around. And so I want you to start looking at the safety that your heart can bring when you have trust and faith in yourself. And um, in looking again at the hands, I, look down at, um, I want to talk a little bit now specifically about healing hands and healing touch. So... The first thing that you need to know is that our hands really represent two elements in Chinese medicine, fire and metal. And that's because these two fingers here are the lung and large intestine, which are metal elements. And lung, of course, having to do with our ability to protect ourselves, the Wei Qi that helps to protect ourselves from influences is bacteria but these other three fingers here all have to do with the fire um, element and the heart being the little finger and then the pericardium 
being the middle finger and that having to do with safety. And then this is the triple heater, which is also part of the five elements. So we're looking at metal and metal having to do with fine refinement. And we're looking at fire having to do with joy and with the beauty of our hearts and what we each carry. And so if we look on our hands from that ability, fire is the element that because it connects with our heart, it brings joy. And if it, fire gets out of balance, then that's anxiety. But if we start looking at our hands as tools for healing, one of the things I'd like to do is just since I've started talking tonight and the minute I start talking that, you know, I oftentimes get tingling in my hand and in my fingers. So what I'd like to do is to have everybody just put your hands about, you know, two or three inches apart from each other. And everybody close your eyes and just start moving your hands in and out. And when I'm talking about moving them, I'm talking about moving them a half inch. I'm not talking about six inches. And as you start moving your hands in and out, start feeling it. Do you feel a pressure building up there? And it's almost like you begin to feel like there's something between your hands. You can feel that pressure. Some people feel it as heat. Some people feel it as tingling. Some people just feel it as a sense of pressure. And as you start feeling that close up, move your hands farther apart to where maybe they're three or four inches. And I'm just gonna stop talking for a few minutes. And I want everybody to just feel their hands coming together and coming apart and see what you can feel there. Okay, so when we talk about the fingers and bringing chi in our hands, our hands can receive energy, but they can also release energy. And so, you know, oftentimes I believe the heart protector, the middle finger, okay, and the thumb, those are the areas I focus on if I'm trying to release something. And so if I had a respiratory virus, it would mean that I would be taking, as I'm putting these hands over my lungs, I would be focusing on the thumb and the middle finger. So I'd be focusing on the lungs and the pericardium. And, you know, I would almost imagine that I'm lifting something up and out. And actually, sometimes we just push my hand away like this. And people don't see this because it's just a real little thing. It's not like I'm hard ah, doing all these things in the room, but just a real gentle, you know, consciousness that I'm taking my hand and allowing everything that this person can let go to be released. Not that it's being released to me, but it's re being released, you know, from the pericardium, which is, again, a fire meridian. And that's because it's a fire meridian, that's why sometimes we feel warmth there. We feel light, almost like there's a heat in our hands because it comes from the fire meridian. And... You know, again, this also from my perspective has to do 
with faith. And, you know, you know, I have faith that there's some divine force that can intervene, okay? And so, you know, that is something that each of us has to look at. Uh, I can't give you a name of what that is, you know, but I know that when I'm working that I always want to focus that healing comes, you know, from outside of us. It's, you know, at the same time we're using our hands that there's some divine presence. And the thing to remember is every religious book talks about that we have divinity within ourselves, okay? That there's something divine within us. So that's not that because I'm great or you're great or whatever. It's just what is. Each of us carries a spark of divinity. And if we have awareness of that while we're working, it's not about us, but it's about whatever this force is that allows us to transmit energy and allows us to be a receptor that helps someone to heal or helps to heal ourselves. So, you know, what I'd like for you to do is experiment with your hands sometimes. Get this energy here moving. And once you feel this energy, take and put your hand right over a place where you are feeling so this um, weekend I uh, um, purchased one of those little electric cars for my grandson and what I found out is that if I'm not careful and I'm trying to torque a big screw and I don't get in a good place that I could actually twist my knee and so earlier today you know I spent a little bit of time with my hands and then I went and just placed my hand over my knee where it was hurting. And I'm going to recommend that we all start, you know, looking at our own abilities. Because it's not that there's only people out in the world who have gone to school for four years that have the ability to help you find healing. Each one of you has that ability yourselves. And it doesn't have to be going, you know, to see someone else. And all of us know that sometimes we walk into a store and, um, let's see, we go through a checkout line and someone touches us just with their heart. They don't even touch us with their hands. They just touch us with their heart. And we walk out of that store, whether it's the Ingalls or whatever, feeling good. And so those are the people in life that are the healers, the ones that you can just be in their presence. And there could be a, you know, someone's selling you, ringing up your groceries. And pay attention to that and see when you are in the presence of someone that you walk away and you just feel good after walking away. I'm going to tell you those are the people who mean healing, not just, you know, for whatever, however they touched you, but they're bringing healing to the world. And what we really need right now is healing, not just, you know, for ourselves individually, but for our country, for our world. And every time that one of us can create healing for another person, even if it's the person that we just see on the street that we smile at, every time we can create healing, then we're helping to heal the planet. And so I wanted to just talk with you tonight a little bit about each of us or healers. And we really need to remember that right now more than any time and start reaching out and reaching out to touch and heal those that we just walk by or that we just hand something to in a store or that, you know, for those who are cooking food, 
it was pretty interesting because there was a time when uh, my partner that most of you probably don't know, but um, we had um, for almost a year, we never ate in a restaurant. We were cooking our own food because we were trying to work with healing um, her illness. And the interesting thing is, is once we went out and started eating, it was almost if, as if we could tell uh, what was happening with the, the people who were cooking the food. And I think there's a movie about, oh, was that like water for chocolate or something where the food that you cooked basically influenced the people they ate. And I'm going to say that, you know, the energy that you put into everything you do, you know, whether it's, you know, working um, at a desk and, or working at a bank, you know, all of these things, working as a checkout person, every one of us, whether we're a farmer or whether we or a doctor of some sort have the ability to heal. And so tonight, when you go to bed, I'd like for each of you to go ahead, put your hands up, create the energy, and feel that spark of divinity that comes from yourself. And then go to sleep by placing your hands over your heart. Because if we heal our hearts, we will heal the world. So, um, I don't know that I have um, much more to say, but if you have any questions, I'd try to answer them. And if not, I'd just like for you to carry this with you tonight. And, um, and remember that each of us are healers. Um, I've just been asked to talk a little again about the mask because it seems like a lot of people may have come in late tonight. So um, what I was talking about, um, I'm going to talk about the mask first and then I'll answer that next question up. Um, I was talking about there's uh, 10 million people in North Carolina, and we've had over um, a thousand deaths, and there are seven and a half million people in Hong Kong, and they've had four deaths. And so what I'm suggesting is that's because they're all wearing masks. And I was talking about during the summer, it's going to be hard. And if you're going out for the day, don't plan on wearing one mask. Have three masks with you, okay, so you can change. And I suggested that they be made out of either cotton cloth or bamboo because uh, um, a ba those basically a cotton mouth, two layers of a T-shirt would block 95%. And another thing I said was, when you take off the mask, make sure you don't touch the outside. If you do, don't reach for your clean mask. Disinfect your hands. We, I have three bottles of disinfectant in my car. I don't know, maybe one for this hand, one for this hand. But, you know, disinfect your hands. And I was talking about um, what we could, about going to a beach. If you want to go to the beach, stay away from people. You know, if that's, you know, go out on the beach. If you're walking on the beach, wear a mask. If you're sitting and you're six feet away from others, you know, that maybe it's fine not to wear a mask. But it's also, they're saying it's safe enough to be in the water and swimming and not worrying because the viral, um, there's not enough viral particles in the world to be dangerous. So I just want to do a few that. We need to wear a mask. It is important. 
And it's not just important for you protecting others. It's important for all of us for protecting ourselves and others. In 95 has a much better job of much better does a much better job of protecting yourself. Now, I have a couple of different kinds of N95s, and one of them actually the one I wear when I'm practicing has a rubber seal on it, and I mean it's it seals. And the only place I feel the I have the respirator valve on it. The only place I feel air when I breathe out really hard, but is I've checked all around here all the air comes out through that respirator. So I think if you have an N95 and you can stand the heat, sure, well. If you have, you know, it's, it's hard because say you have a lung issue, maybe you have emphysema or you have COPD, it's harder for you to breathe out of one of those masks, but it also really protects you. So. If you're going to be in a group where a lot of people are, because you could be in a group with 30 people who said, man, I'm good, I'm healthy. But we now know there's a, real, there's a percentage of people who never have any symptoms, but they're still able to spread it. Okay. Um, someone asked, do I believe we can heal over the phone or through a computer? I don't think you need a phone or a computer. I think that the energy of healing is something that goes beyond some, that type of a connection. So, you know, I think when I grew up hearing, you know, let's all bow our heads in prayer for uh, Miss Smith or for Brother Thomas, okay? And, you know, I'm, I grew up Southern Baptist where two or more are gathered in my name, and I don't care whose name it is. You know, you know, I believe that based on our culture, we have different names for what that divine being or divine presence is. But, yeah, so I guess I answered that question. Well, obviously, I don't even think you have to have a phone or a computer. Um, there was also a question about what we should do when we're exercising, if we're jogging, what you would recommend about wearing masks in that case. I'll tell you, if someone is running and wearing a mask, and if you are running towards them and they're not wearing a mask, I would certainly cut into the street to get away from them. Because I'm sorry, when we're running, <sighs> we are spraying a lot more. And so to run by somebody, oh, my God, no, I think that's horrible. You know, riding bikes, you know, if you, you need not to be riding right past somebody. You need to have on mask. Um, uh, can you maybe just clarify, there's another question about the N95. Maybe you can clarify, like, when or times when it would be more important to wear that mask. So, for example, if you're in a gathering of people where everyone else is not wearing masks or if you have to fly on an airplane or if like you, you're in a, a clinical setting, but, but can you just mention some of the times where it's really important to wear an N95 as, some, as well as some of the times where it may be less important for people who do have difficulty, like there's one lady who gets headaches with the N95 pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's really hard because I, I understand that I would, really in that situation make sure that I had really good cloth masks that were as tight as possible over my nose and around. And, um, you know, there's, again, an N95 mask is one that's they say is more protected for you. Um, you know, but we, we, they're talking about now that even someone who's coughing, even if your face is covered, that the fluid in our eyes, you know, is, you know, at risk for, you know, us being able to catch this virus. So, um, you know, I don't know that an N95 is ever required. I don't think it should be. That's something that, you know, if you want to wear it, uh, is it required? It's not required for anybody in the state that I know of. You know, 
I think masks are required, but the type of mask that you wear is going to have to be what feels right to you and what's comfortable for you. That it's uh, N95 isn't required. And I told people last week, you know, if you're an acupuncturist here in our community, I'm happy to give you N95s if you don't have any. We've been blessed to have a large number of N95s. So, um, you know, feel free to uh, call me. But I don't think that, you know, it's ever required. That's if someone, if you would like to wear one, of course. Okay. Did I answer all those questions? I think so. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, I, thank you, Susan, for that sweet uh, comment. Um, I will, um, I think um, what I'd like to do is join y'all again in two weeks. Um, I'm going to take uh, next week off. Uh, what do I use to sanitize my hands? Uh, uh, hi, Coco. Um, you know, we've taken and been making a lot of the sanitizer because it's impossible to get the, when I was in Louisiana, um, I actually could not find any uh, rubbing alcohol um, there. And I had to make a lot for my mother. So I went out um, and when I went out, what I did was I put, I went to a, a liquor store and I asked them, did they have any Everclear? And she said, no, I don't have Everclear, but I've got this alcohol that's 180 proof. It's like, whoa. And I thought, I didn't know that people drink alcohol that, you know, ever clear. We don't really drink. But I went ahead and I bought this alcohol that was 180 proof. It was, I think it might have been, it was either gin or vodka, I think. And um, uh, at that point in time, I took it, then I put a small amount of hydrogen peroxy in, and then I dump as much peppermint as I can, essential oil, to try and get it to smell better. Um, and I had to make it smell good for my mother to use it. And so, um, but I used, you know, a 95 has a much better job of, a much better, does a much better job of protecting yourself. Now, I have a couple of different kinds of N95s, and one of them, actually, the one I wear when I'm practicing, has a rubber seal on it. And I mean, it's, it seals. And the only place I feel the, I have the respirator valve on it, the only place I feel air when I breathe out really hard but is, I've checked all around here, all the air comes out through that respirator. So I think if you have an N95 and you can stand the heat, sure, well, if you have you know, it's, it's hard because say you have a lung issue, maybe you have emphysema or you have COPD. It's harder for you to breathe out of one of those masks, but it also really protects you. So if you're going to be in a group where a lot of people are, because you could be in a group with 30 people who said, man, I'm good, I'm healthy. But we now know there's a really, there's a percentage of people who never have any symptoms, but they're still able to spread it. Okay. Um, someone asked, do I believe we can heal over the phone or through a computer? I don't think you need a phone or a computer. I think that the energy of healing is something that goes beyond some, that type of a connection. So, you know, I think when I grew up hearing, you know, let's all bow our heads in prayer for uh, Miss Smith or for Brother Thomas, okay? And, you know, I'm, I grew up Southern Baptist where 
two or more are gathered in my name, and I don't care whose name it is. You know, you know, I believe that based on our culture, we have different names for what that divine being or divine presence is. But yeah, so I guess I answered that question. Well, obviously, I don't even think you have to have a phone or a computer. Um, there was also a question about what we should do when we're exercising, if we're jogging, what you would recommend about wearing masks in that case. I'll tell you, if someone is running and wearing a mask, and if you are running towards them and they're not wearing a mask, I would certainly cut into the street to get away from them. Because I'm sorry, when we're running, <sighs> we are spraying a lot more. And so to run by somebody, oh my God, no, I think that's horrible. You know, riding bikes, you know, if you, you need not to be riding right past somebody, you need to have on mask. Um, uh, can you maybe just clarify, there's another question about the N95. Maybe you can clarify like when or times when it would be more important to wear that mask. So for example, if you're in a gathering of people where everyone else is not wearing masks or if you have to fly on an airplane or if like you, you're in a, a clinical setting. But, but can you just mention some of the times where it's really important to wear an N95 as, some, as well as some of the times where it may be less important for people who do have difficulty? Like there's one lady who gets headaches with the N95 pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's really hard because I, I understand that I would – really in that situation make sure that I had really good cloth masks that were as tight as possible over my nose and around. And, um, you know, there's, again, an N95 mask is one that's they say is more protective for you. Um, you know, but you know, we, we, they're talking about now that even someone who's coughing, even if your face is covered, that the fluid in our eyes, you know, is, you know, at risk for, you know, us being able to catch this virus. So, um, you know, I don't know that an N95 is ever required. I don't think it should be. That's something that, you know, if you want to wear it, uh, is it required? It's not required for anybody in the state that I know of. You know, I think masks are required, but the type of mask that you wear is going to have to be what feels right to you and what's comfortable for you. That it's uh, N95 is it required? And I told people last week, you know, if you're an acupuncturist here in our community. I'm happy to give you N95s if you don't have any. We've been blessed to have a large number of N95s. So, um, you know, feel free to uh, call me. But I don't think that, you know, it's ever required. That's if someone, if you would like to wear one, of course. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, I, thank you, Susan, for that sweet uh, comment. Um, I will, um, I think um, what I'd like to do is join y'all again in two weeks. Um, I'm going to take uh, next week off. Uh, what do I use to sanitize my hands? Uh, uh, hi, Coco. Um, you know, we've taken and been making a lot of the sanitizer because it's impossible to get the... When I was in Louisiana, um, I actually could not find any uh, rubbing alcohol um, there. And I had to make a lot for my mother. So I went out. Um, and when I went out, what I did was I put, I went to a, a liquor store and I asked them, do they have any Everclear? She said, no, I don't have Everclear, but I've got this alcohol that's 180 proof. It's like, whoa. And I thought, I didn't know that people drink alcohol that 
you know, ever clear. We don't really drink. But I went ahead and I bought this alcohol that was 180 proof. It was, I think it might have been, it was either gin or vodka, I think. And um, uh, at that point in time, I took it, then I put a small amount of hydrogen peroxide in, and then I dumped as much peppermint as I can, essential oil, to try and get it to smell better. Um, and I had to make it smell good for my mother to use it. And so, um, but I used, you know, um, about 50% of the rubbing alcohol, this gin or vodka, and then I... Uh, added a small amount of hydrogen peroxide, and then I also added um, a tiny bit of coconut oil uh, to just make it a little bit of slippery, and a lot of essential oils, okay? Those are the things. And there's a million recipes over the internet, but you can go to an alcohol store if you can't get rubbing alcohol at this point. It costs a little bit more, but you know, my mom's ninety, so I could I could buy a, a fifth of whatever that is. I think it's called a fifth. Um, do I have an email? I don't mind sharing my email. It's president at DallasTraditions edu. You just have to look up Dallas Traditions, the name of the acupuncture college, so you spell that. But it's president at DallasTraditions edu. What is my perspective on the growing COVID numbers in North Carolina and Buncom? Uh, I believe that we opened up too quickly. Um, and I also believe that there are too many people here who do not understand the seriousness of it. At this point, people are being able to say, oh, well, it's mostly just the people in the retirement homes. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's half of the people in Asheville who have passed away, I think, are from the retirement homes. Um, but I don't know that that's, um, you know, I don't know that that's, I don't know, that doesn't give me any feeling of safety at this point in time. I think that um, the best thing we can do at this point wash our hands, and certainly, certainly wear a mask. That's essential. Um, Thank you very much. Are there any last questions? Thank you, Wenge. Y'all have a good week, and I will see you in two weeks. Okay. It's nice to see the names of so many people I know and love. Bye-bye. <laughs>